Hello and welcome back. And I now want to talk a little bit about the next part of why we are bringing you this class. And that is what is the difference between, say, Young Living Oils and uh, the pretend oil that I don't have in my hand, which would be one I would own and refuse to buy, <laughs> but an oil that uh, you can get at, say, Walmart. Um, there's a lot of different oils out there. There's a lot of different price points. And someone new to oiling might think, well, these are a little more expensive. Why would I want to pay that kind of money when I can go and get it for maybe, you know, half the price or less at the store, right? That's something very important to consider. And if you're kind of frugal or, say, Dutch like me, those are things that you think about. Um, but I want to caution you against doing that. Number one, as we said in the last couple of posts, you have to be very careful about oils that you're going to use in the ways we suggest tonight. We're going to talk to you about um, applying them and also possibly taking them internally, as well as just, you know, using them aromatherapy, sniffing out of the bottle. Um, recently, I was at a church in Florida, and the pastor there referred to these as plugins. Well, to me, a plugin is like a Glade plug-in or maybe a Scentsy warmer or something like that, just something to scent your home. But those things, Scentsy plugins or Glade, they don't have anything from a plant in them. They are just fragrance and fragrance is laboratory created. It's all chemicals, often with formaldehyde to make it go a little longer. But a lot of people think that that's all this is. I was at Bath and Body over, Bed Bath and Beyond over Christmas, this huge aisle with these pretty nice looking diffusers and these very questionable oils next to them. Again, someone that doesn't know anything about using essential oils for therapeutic purposes would think that's well enough. And if, they, you know, really honestly, if that's all you want to do is just scent your home and you don't really care about what you're breathing in, that is going to be good enough. But do not ever confuse the two. Uh, when someone says to you about putting lavender on that, then you got to be careful about what you are putting on you. Now, I am going to just read from the master, from Gary Young. He is the owner of uh, and the founder of Young Living, and he put a huge article out um, for all of the members to read about his passion about it. And I'm going to just borrow some of his words, so just bear with me a little bit. Um, his story is really fascinating um, about how and why he got into this. But uh, he talked about when he first started using essential oils, and he said... Um, Today, we can add to the synthetic nature identical fragrance oils and third and fourth grade cut oils with synthetic compounds to mimic the look of pure oils. Um, I was a little confusing the way he said that, but basically what he's saying is that you can take and make a bioidentical out of these. You can make it in, in, in a lab to make it, to mimic it, uh, to look like and smell like a pure oil. He said, 31 years ago, no one cared about the quality of oils because it wasn't an issue. It was just oils for, for fragrances, for fragrancing. Um, certain oils were actually used for flavoring, um, but most were used for fragrancing and incense. When he started looking more into this, though, uh, he, was, um, he met a guy, he said he met a Frenchman, who had moved to Los Angeles with the intent of opening a shop and selling oils to Americans. I thought perhaps he could be a supplier for me, he said, and save him a lot of time and money and, you know, and you know, creating pretty much what he hadn't created yet, which is Young Living. And then he smelled the oils. He said he knew they were not right based on what little I had already learned. And so he questioned this guy, and this was the answer he got. He, this man said to him, no one in America knows anything about essential oils, and there is such a supply of poor quality and inferior oils in the perfume trade that I can buy them dirt cheap and make a big profit here in America. And that's probably what you're seeing out there. This is a new cool thing. Everyone's jumping on the bandwagon, and suddenly they're just coming up with an oil that took Gary Young years to figure out even how to create, Let, not, not to mention the year or two um, in growing the oil and harvesting. Um, so this is just, you know, I'm not going to keep going on and on about this here, but um, that alone speaks volumes that um, if you are looking for a pure essential oil 
and you want something like what I posted a minute ago uh, with the seed to seal quality, there's really no other way to find that except in a company like Young Living that pro that goes over every part of the process from planting to the um, cultivating and harvesting, bottling, testing, all of that. Um, all of that is done in-house by Young Living so that all you get in this bottle is a pure lavender, the first distillation. So it's the first time the crop's even been worked with. And that's the only time Young Living will work with the crop. And they're going to sell you the highest quality oil made. So that is why you want to do this. Uh, you want to buy a Young Living oil and use it for the things we're talking about tonight. I hope that clears up a few things, but uh, if not, just stay tuned. We'll teach you a few more things. Bye-bye.